Hello friends, Ash here with Gentsense, and today I've got a very serious video for you. 60% of fragrance wearing males suffer from poor performance. Uh, yeah, that's something that you don't wanna talk about, even to your doctor. But that's okay, because today I'm gonna be talking to you about 10 different fall fragrances that have fantastic performance. So these fragrances can last all day or all night. Okay. Uh, enough of all that. Let's go ahead and jump into this and talk about 10 fall fragrances that have great staying power. Okay guys, fragrances today are all designers. No niche fragrances in this list. It would have been easier to do niche fragrances because typically you would think of those niche scents, those higher priced, high quality scents as having a little extra oomph to them. But if you do ever wanna shop for niche fragrances, see what I did there? Use the code GENTS10 at luckyscent.com or twistedlily.com. It'll save you 10% off your purchase. So. Yeah, links in the description for those and all today's fragrances. Let's kick things off with the Prada. Yeah, a Prada. Uh, they don't really get the most love as far as high performing fragrances go, but this one is a really good one. Amber Intense. Prada Amber and Prada Amber Intense both are like fragrances that I'll remember and I'll go, oh yeah, that's really good. And then I'll spray it on, put it back in the collection and then like forget it exists for six months. I don't know why that is, but they've always been that way for me. This one is a, a rich fragrance. It's dark. Actually, some people will compare this to smelling like Tom Ford's Noir Eau de Parfum, which is a fragrance that doesn't really get along with me all that well, but thankfully this one does. So between the two, this one I'll take 10 times out of 10 over the Tom Ford, though I know a lot of people out there do like that one. As myrrh, patchouli, amber, and vanilla as some of the notes in the fragrance. So you've got this, this sweetness to it, this resinous sweetness, but at the same time it has this little hint of earthiness and darkness. Really, really nice fragrance overlooked at this point because Prada for most men is either Prada Loam or one of the Luna Rosa fragrances. They don't really think about these. So overlooked and a really darn good one. Actually, I did a video not very long ago where I was checking out the highest rated fragrances for different brands on Fragrantica. And that's actually Prada's highest rated men's fragrance on Fragrantica. Yeah above Luna Rosa Carbon, above Loam, above Luna Rosa Ocean, all that stuff. Next one is from Paco Rabanne. It's Pure Excess Night, which is a fragrance I like a lot, along with the original Pure Excess. I really dig that one too. Cacao, caramel, myrrh, ginseng, and ginger, some of the notes. Another sweet fragrance. Actually, a lot of these are gonna be on the sweeter side of things. Love the opening to this the most because it has an effervescence to it, a sparkle to it, where it really just draws you in. Love it. Some people might say it's a little too, sugary sweet for them, but I don't think so. Pure Excess Night, awesome fragrance and great for pulling compliments as well. And uh, surprise of the century, Pure Excess Night, a great nighttime fragrance. Ah, oh, imagine that, that's crazy. Next, you're gonna tell me they're gonna come out with Pure Excess Day and it's gonna be super fresh with citrus and white florals and it's gonna be an awesome daytime fragrance. That would be insane. And this is not the only night fragrance in the video. There's one more coming up here shortly. But the next one I wanna talk about is from Mont Blanc and it's Legend Eau de Parfum. This has that legend DNA, which means it smells similar to Abercrombie and Fitch, fierce. But this one, a little bit more elegant a little bit more mature. It has more of a, a woodiness to it, an oak moss as well in the base. And while it does have that, that freshness that you expect in the opening, again, drawing it close to Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce, it's maybe not quite as fresh as the original legend, which you would expect to be fair. One thing I have found though, is that the performance, the longevity specifically of Legend Eau de Parfum is superior to the original Legend Eau de Toilette. And on the whole, actually, the Eau de Parfum is better than the original Legend. So check out Legend Eau de Parfum if you really like Fierce or the original Legend or fragrances of that style and you're looking for one that has a little touch of extra class and better longevity. Now we're gonna go with a Lalique Ancre Noir à l'extreme. I could put in the original Ancre Noir here as well, but I decided to go with this one. Vetiver, Benzoin, Incense, and Cypress. Some of the notes in the fragrance here, very woody with resinous sweetness as well and uh, smokiness throughout the scent. Now, if you're just getting into fragrances, Ancre Noir, Ancre Noir All Extreme, these may not work for you at all. I would tell you to maybe sample first, but they're so inexpensive at discounters that it kind of defeats the purpose because if you buy like a 10 milliliter decant of this, 
and it ends up being 10 or $15 after shipping. It's not really a good buy because the fragrance itself at most discounters most of the time is around 30 bucks for a full presentation, sometimes less. So yeah, like I was saying, if you're brand new into fragrances, this may not work for you. It's a dark fragrance. It's a little bit rooty. Uh, as it's been described with the vetiver in here. Fragrances like that, fragrances of that style oftentimes are not great for beginners. But as long as you like fragrances of this style, these darker, woodier scents, it's definitely worth checking out because for the price point, it's gonna be one of the higher quality fragrances you'll ever get your nose on. Personally, I love this stuff, but I have heard from enough people that don't to know that it doesn't work for everybody. Okay, let's get to that other nighttime fragrance now or night named flanker. It is Kinzo Ohm Night. I actually have two bottles of this stuff. I have this one, which is the first bottle that I bought when it first came out. It's a tester, so it has the notes right up here. It's pretty close to empty. It's like right here. So when this popped back up at discounters a while back, I bought another bottle just in case. So this one's discontinued. But like I said, it has popped back up at discounters, so you can currently find it for a non-outrageous price, which is really good. And this one's a little bit interesting because it's Kinzo Ohm Night. So you might be thinking, oh, it's gonna be really dark, heavy, mysterious, whatever, but it's actually sweet, a little bit fresh, and has a tropical fruitiness to it. So it has mango as one of the notes along with grapefruit, but it actually comes across a little bit coconutty as well. You have tonka bean in here, you got vetiver, you have woody notes as well, and a little bit of cardamom, so you have this bit of spiciness in there, more warmth and sweetness as it dries with the tonka bean. I think it actually smells really good and I get very, very good projection and longevity with this fragrance. For the most part, most people say that it works really well, eight plus hours off their skin, et cetera, et cetera. But do be aware that some people out there, for whatever reason, it just doesn't seem to work for them. For me though, I have always had good luck with that one. Great clubbing fragrance, great night out fragrance, good compliment puller, and really overlooked. At this point, nobody's gonna be wearing Kenzo Ohm Night. So it's something that can help set you apart a little bit. After that, Gentleman Eau de Parfum. This right here, a modern classic, modern masterpiece both for me anyway it has vanilla iris and tolu balsam as some of the notes in the fragrance it gets lumped in with valentino uomo intense and dior Homme intense and the original dior Homme fragrances like that because of how the iris comes across with that kind of creamy makeup -y nature absolutely fan freaking Fantastic. This thing is just one of my favorite smells ever. And then the fragrances that came after it, you have so many good ones to pick from. Gentleman Eau de Toilette Intense, Gentleman Eau de Parfum Reserve Privé. But uh, yeah, a lot of the flankers that came after this are super solid and this one still absolutely crushes it. The performance is fantastic. Now we're gonna throw it back a little bit to 212 VIP from Carolina Herrera. I've got the big old 200 milliliter size bottle. So mine's clear, whereas normally it would not be. Nice magnetic cap. I like it. This one's got a really interesting note breakdown. So it has passion fruit in here, which you don't see all that often. It has mint, it has vodka, it has amber, it has spices. I think it might also have gin, but don't quote me on that. Either way, it's an interesting take on a boozy fragrance because they're going with clear alcohols that don't really put forth all that much sweetness. I mean, vodka, you know, it smells like rubbing alcohol. There's gonna be somebody in the comments who's like, actually, I'm a vodka connoisseur. And if you get this type of vodka, it doesn't really smell of rubbing alcohol. You get fine, faint floral wafts and the the the. To which I'll say, I take your credit for it. Uh, I was referencing Smirnoff. So yeah. Vodka. Uh, they want to switch things up. They want to make sure you know this is a night out fragrance, right? So they give you that liquor note, but they want to keep it kind of clean and fresh while also being sweet and loud. It's a really nice clubbing fragrance, one that is a little bit out of the norm nowadays. People typically think of stuff like Eros or One Million or something like that but this works just as well. So a really nice compliment puller, overlooked at this point, 212 VIP men, great performance here. And I will say Herrera has some underrated fragrances in the 212 line. I mean, some of them are not very good. Like I hate 212 VIP wins, for example, but some of the ones in that 212 line, pretty good. After that, let's talk Dolce & Gabbana's The One Mysterious Night. Very mysterious. What's mysterious about this? Not a whole lot. 
actually, because the note breakdown has the trifecta of oud notes, which to me is not a mysterious note breakdown at all, because it has oud, rose, and saffron. That's basic. That is the most obvious choice for an oud fragrance. But that's okay. Also has amber in here. So I mean, it's not just rose oud and saffron. There are there are a number of other notes, and it's actually a really really well done rose oud saffron fragrance, especially when you consider that this is a designer scent, and you can pick it up for a decent ish price from a discounter as compared to niche fragrances that will more typically use rose oud and saffron. And the performance is great as well. Maybe you wouldn't think of the one as having great performance because everybody thinks about the one eau de toilette, the original, where it was. Quite quite weak and sat close to the skin, but this stuff is great. Really lasts a long time, pushes out well also. After that, an Armoth. Yeah, an Armoth, a clone house. Ooh. But it's not Club de Nuit intense, man. Though it could have been, couldn't it? No, nah, this time it's Radical Brown. Yes, the fragrance of choice of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because radical. Actually, it doesn't even say radical brown on the front. It just does legitimately say radical. Next, our moth needs Cowabunga. You know, that one could really be a hit. Bodacious, tubular, you know? You got a lot of options here. We need some flankers. Presentation is interesting because at once it's both gaudy and hideous and actually looks pretty good for our moth. So I can't decide if I love it or hate it somewhere in between. You have a sticker, which is faux snake skin that goes around the bottle and around the cap. So that's kind of, ugh. And then the bottle is plastic over top glass, which you can see in the middle there. So this has cinnamon, tobacco, amber, and incense as some of the notes in the fragrance. It smells similar to a few different things, kind of a, a mixture of things, a twist, you could say. And wow, the atomizer is terrible on this one. I reviewed this, but um, it's worth pointing out again, this is just the worst atomizer. God, it's just all floppy and ugh. So this one smells a little bit like L'Homme Ideal Eau de Parfum from Guerlain. If you mixed it with Parfum Samarly Herod, it also smells a bit like Black Orient, Man in Black, Black Orient from Bulgari, which is discontinued and hard to find. So this fragrance right here is sitting along those three. It's like bits and pieces from each all put into here. And the quality is actually pretty good. So this is one of those Arma fragrances that I think is worth highlighting because it does things well, and it's an alternative potentially to three different fragrances out there, all of which are much more expensive than this one. All right, last fragrance. Ultramall from Jean-Paul Gaultier, making an appearance once again. Vanilla, cinnamon, amber, pear, and lavender, some of the notes in the fragrance, really well known for being a club scent, for being a compliment monster, which it absolutely is. And because it is a club fragrance, it's like a prerequisite. If you have a fragrance that people say is for clubbing, it's gonna last forever. It's gonna project heavily. It's gonna get people's attention because generally a fragrance is only accepted as a club fragrance if it can overwhelm at least 100 people that are near you and make sure that everybody can pinpoint the guy wearing the fragrance, right? So that's what Ultramall does. You can walk into a club on the dance floor and everybody's gonna be like, oh, it's that dude. That's the guy. I smell him. He's 35 feet away. There are 25 people between us. I smell him for better or worse. Hopefully better. Ultra Mall, I've loved ever since it came out. Wife loves it as well. One of her favorites in my entire collection. Busted through a whole bottle of the stuff and still have it in the collection. So Ultra Mall wrapping this one up. There we go, guys. Some super powered fragrances to get you through this fall. If you're looking for stuff that'll last a long time. Nice little mix here. We've got some fragrances classier, some more clubbing, some sweeter, some more elegant. So hopefully something here would work for you. I'm gonna roll out of here. Let me know in the comments some of the fragrances that you like to wear during the fall when you just want something that's gonna last all day or night. Stay safe out there, guys. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.